tips and tricks and a special tips and tricks because uh, it's just not us uh, in the episode. In fact, it's not going to be, this is probably all you're going to see of us in this episode. Yeah, we, we have two special guests. And without them, we couldn't uh, be doing what we've been doing. So we thought it'd be best to feature the two dumbasses' wives. So we're going to have our dumbass wives on the show. But to be fair, it's the better half of the two dumbasses, right? Yeah. So by sure. the way, cheers. Cheers. So uh, anyway, the episode, uh, again, uh, should be quick in length, but we're going to try to cover it in detail is canning venison. Yep. So we've done this, um, our first year of doing it, we've had it in the past, but um, how long have you guys been canning venison? Well, you know, I mean, it was even somewhat new for me. My wife uh, and her family have done it for years, and uh, where they can can basically roast, uh, beef roast, etc. And we've often, I mean, the, all of us have talked about, gosh, we should try this on venison. This should work. And uh, I think your wife was the first one to dip her toe in it, and then my wife uh, canned some Lamont, and uh, it turned out great. And just to be clear, the Lamont was the name of the deer. Yeah, that you shot this yeah, year. It's not right. a neighbor or anything, <laughs> no. right? So, yeah. We're good there. No, no, no broke breaking laws or anything. No, but uh, yeah. So again, we'll keep this short, and uh, that's what this episode is going to be about. And uh, we hope you appreciate. It. You know, I, I think one other thing we might want to add is, is uh, hey, there's a reason why you want to can can the venison. It, it's it's already cooked. Uh, it's ready to use. And uh, probably one of the most important things for us is, is it doesn't take up that valuable freezer space. So um, shelf stable. Yeah, shelf stable. And I mean, it's delicious. It, it is. really is delicious. It really tenderizes the meat. And uh, I'm not sure what the ladies are going to do as far as adding spice to it, but you can, you know, you can play with the, the recipe and, and the canning process and. Uh, it, it, it's wonderful. And that, that brings up another thing. If you do uh, alter or have some suggestions or you play around with recipe and come up with some great ideas, we'd love to have a comment from you and put it on our put it on our, uh, our website or send us an email or most importantly, leave a comment on, on the videos on YouTube or, or wherever you see our podcast. Yeah, and I guess the last thing we would say is, is uh, you know, we value our our viewers and our, our subscribers and we're trying to get feedback from them so attached in this this and then a few other episodes uh, we would love for you to go in and click the link um, for just a quick five question survey and uh, give us some feedback on you know how we can get better is really what we are trying to do so this will be the first episode that we'll have that link in there I mean, we enjoy doing it for ourselves, but we also do it for, for you, our listeners, and we want to make sure we provide the most value for you. So stay with us, and uh, the next uh, part of the episode is going to be a lot better looking people, that's for sure, and uh, let's learn how to can medicine. Hi, welcome YouTube viewers and podcasters everywhere. I am Samantha, wife of a dumbass. This is my friend Ruthie, another wife of a dumbass. <laughs> so today we're going to explain a little bit about how to can venison. Um, it's amazing, delicious, wonderful stuff you can do about anything with. Um, but I am a new canner. Ruthie is an expert, so I always read the labels. Um, so we've got our jars, our canner, our meat. Um, Ruthie, you want to tell them how we're going to season it and explain the pressure cookers? Yeah. So, yeah. So we're basically going to fill our jars with, uh, and we have pints and quarts, and we're going to then season them then um, with kosher salt, a little black pepper, and then we also like some fresh garlic um, in our canned meat. And then the other supplies that we need is actual pressure cookers. We actually have two different types here. We have a pressure gauge a canner, and then we also have a canner with a jiggler, which is a different type, but they both do the same thing. And most importantly, as Sam said, 
You gotta have the book and understand how to use your pressure cooker. Okay. Well, let's get started. Let's, uh, we've got some deer roast that are thawed out and we're gonna cube those up and we're gonna get them in jars. All right, so we got our, our deer. Um, we have a couple different types uh, or pieces of meat here. And so we are going to be trimming off anything, uh, extra fat, um, or we have, actually there's a bone in this one. Um, and we're really just getting it prepped to go into the jars. That's right. The problem with canning deer meat is, and a lot of people don't like venison because of the gamey taste, and that's why it's so important on venison to be sure to trim the fat off of that. I put in big chunks, but it's, you know, whatever, whatever is available, but again, I'm trying to clean off anything that I, you know, deem is um, either fatty or gristly or whatever, um, just to make sure that you don't get that gamey taste. And any leftovers that we don't use in canning? get boiled up and the dogs eat well. All right, we've filled all of our jars now. Uh, Sammy's already got hers prepped, but I have not, so I'm going to put some garlic in each of my jars. And then I am going to put, as you can see, we didn't fill them to the rim. We, you need to leave space um, for the, basically for the meat to boil within it. Uh, so make sure that you leave enough space on the top of your jar um, when you're filling them. About one inch is recommended. It will make its own juice, so you don't have to add liquid. So I'm just adding a big uh, heaping teaspoon of kosher salt, or you can use canning salt, um, to each of my jars. And then I'm going to throw a little black pepper in just because I like it. And we put garlic in each of ours, and Sammy did something even a little different. Kind of went off reservation and added red pepper flakes this time with my clove of garlic and my kosher salt, uh, which I did not measure, I just sprinkled it in. So, um, not very good at following a recipe, but stuff always seems to come out okay. So now that our jars are ready, we have to actually heat up our lids. Um, and the reason we do that is we want a good seal um, for when we put it in pressure cooker. So we're going to actually heat up our lids next, and we'll be back. have heated up our lids and uh, the only other thing that I also do is just make sure that the, your top of your jars are clean. Um, you don't want any salt or you know meat or anything like that um, on any of your jars. Um, so just make sure your jars are clean on top. Put your lids on and then you're going to and they don't have to be super tight, um, but they need to be like, snug. Snug. They go tighten them later when you take them out. All right, I'm gonna take this out. Mother, father. All right, five jars, ready to go. Ready for the can. We're gonna get our pressure cookers on the stove. Get the water in there. We're gonna put about. Three for mine is uh, a lot larger than Ruby's, so mine's going to need three quarts of hot water, and then I'm going to submerge my jars into that, um, and then we'll put the lid on and seal her up and set the temperature. All right, we have our jars ready. I have already put one quart of water in the bottom of my pressure cooker. I'm going to put a second one because that's what my canner calls for, and then I'm going to position. Um, my jars. This can actually hold up to seven and I only have six in here right now. That's all I had for me. So I just space them evenly. So we're going to put the lid on, bring it down, and with my pressure cooker, uh, the instructions tell me that I need 10 pounds of pressure. So I'm going to put it on the 10 pounds of pressure and then I'm going to put it on the stove. 
and we'll see what Sammy's doing over here. Hey everybody, so I've got my canner on the stove here and my jars are in here. Um, I've got only five jars. I need for my pints um, 11 pounds of pressure for 75 minutes. So since um, we've got two big canners and a lot of meat to do, we're just gonna go one at a time here and I am first. So I'm gonna put my lid on here because we're getting warm. And what I'm going to do now is wait. My instructions tell me to get a, um, a bit of steam rolling out through this vent pipe here before I put my regulator on. So we're going to wait and do that. And we're going to take it up to 11 pounds pressure. Okay, so we've got a little bit of steam. I don't know if you can see it, but we've got some wafting out of here. So we're going to go ahead and put our regulator on. And we're going to go up to 11 pounds of pressure. And then we're going to set the clock for 75 minutes. Thanks for listening or watching our show. We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumbasses signing off. Until next time, be, be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors.